Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking about gardening. Happy to have with us a master gardener. We have Cindy Shapton with us, garden consultant, who has brought all kinds of good stuff, learning all kinds of things. Um, and an opportunity for you to call in with any question you may have about gardening as we head into the winter. And Jane is on line one. Hello, Jane. Hi. Go right ahead. Hey, Jane. So I have a couple of questions. I really wanted to get into herb gardening. Okay. But, <laughs> but I didn't know if you could, I, you know, I heard you talking about partner gardening. I think it was where you put herbs together. Um, I kind of have a twofold question about, you know, outdoor and indoor. Okay. If I want to do outdoor, what would grow best next to each other? And if I want to grow indoor, uh, do I need to grow some of, I think you said it was the daffodil that was kind of an insect repellent. Would that be kind because, of, you know, indoor gardening, wouldn't that bring some of the bugs in and, you know, you kind of want to stay away from that. <laughs> Yes, those are good questions, good questions. Okay, the, um, the first one we'll address is um, companion planting. And that's a, that's a very um, uh, interesting subject because it's, you know, plants are, a lot of plants are just like people. Um, some people you get along with and, and some you just don't. <laughs> so it's the same with herbs. Um, some of them play well together and some just don't. So you kind of learn how to, you know, separate them if you need to, if they, you know, become a problem. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but <laughs> but uh, a lot of times they do have attributes that will naturally um, lend themselves to their neighbors. For instance, we'll just talk about a couple really great companions, simple ones. One is called borage. It's something you can plant by seed. It's a plant that um, will grow to be about two to three feet tall sometimes if it's happy, has beautiful blue edible flowers, but it is called, um, it is a plant that is um, an overall um, great neighbor to have with any kind of plants because it helps to strengthen all its neighbors and helps them to resist diseases and insects. So you know, that's one that's kind of, it will help all of the plants. Now, another one is chamomile. They call it the plant's physician. We all know chamomile tea, right? You drink it when oh, you, yeah. you know, Peter Rabbit drank it when, you know, Mr. McGregor, you know, almost got his head and mama gave him, you know, chamomile tea to calm him down, right? Well, it is actually a plant that you could plant again. You can start seeds all over in your garden and it actually helps to keep all the plants around it healthy. So these are just a couple really simple ones. Another really great one is when you grow tomatoes, you should always grow basil with it. You should intersperse basil plants with your tomatoes because number one, there's a chemical reaction that happens and makes your basil will actually help to make your tomatoes taste better. And number two, it'll help to keep the hornworms away from your tomato crop. So those are <clears throat> some simple things you can do. Cilantro, cilantro is a plant that actually when you grow cilantro, it, acts to, it helps to keep aphids off other plants uh, of the neighbors. So, and that's another one that's really especially nice with tomatoes or peppers. Um, you know, so there's a lot of plants. Marigold, we talked about marigold, and <clears throat> this is the one I think you were referring to. And this actually helps keep the nematodes, which is a, a, an organism in the soil that eats the roots of your plants. We don't want them. And then, um, and it also helps to keep insects away. So this is something that you would plant in the summertime with it. When I bring my plant, when I start plants indoors, I don't really put companion plants with them because when they're indoors, um, number one, you don't usually have that many you know, you don't usually bring bugs in, especially if you plant them from seed inside. And then, um, but the same rules could apply, except that you're probably not going to grow tomatoes indoors. So, but you could grow basil, you can grow thyme. Um, there's lots of herbs you can grow, chives indoors for the winter. But plants always do best, especially herbs outside. They love outside. It's just a little harder. Rosemary is something you can grow indoors, but you want to give, you want to keep it the, in your coolest part of your house away from the heat you know where it has some sunshine and you no know, heat so maybe sometimes that might even be a sunny window in your garage you know and where it doesn't freeze and it will thank you because it doesn't like heat you mm -hmm. know it doesn't like mm -hmm. it dries it out so um, sometimes we um, we pamper plants indoors too much we water over water them we you know give them too much heat and so you know, but you can you can grow them indoors um, in a sunny window. Just try to keep things away from, you know, a lot of heat, and you know, keep them um, uh, 
just water just enough. Uh, but always remember that plants do better outside. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah so. Um, and so for the beginner, the, that that is kind of what you just gave is kind of a step by step on what you what you could start with and yes. where you could place them. Yes. See, I think uh, that's great. Yes. And then uh, as far as chores for the fall, gardening chores for the fall, yes. what, what, are, what are some of the things? Well, number one, you got to keep weeding. Even though you're tired, if you, if you don't get the seed, you know, if you allow weeds to go to seed, then you have like, it, they're in your soil forevermore. So you're just making yourself more work. So even though you're tired, and the good news, it's cooler in the fall. So if there's any weeds, get them out. We don't, you know, just dispose of them now. And then um, it's time to uh, leaves. We have a lot of leaves falling, right? So rake those up and either put them in your compost pile because they make great leaf mold for in your compost for your garden or shred them. A lot of people have shredders now. Shred them and then put them back as mulch in your perennial gardens or your kitchen garden. And um, so use, use the things like that. If you have um, containers outside, like pretty pottery containers, terracotta, it's time to empty them out and get them in the garage or the garden shed because they will freeze and crack and be ruined and it's sad and they're expensive. Well, that's good. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, some bird baths you need to turn upside down so they mm -hmm. don't break mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, those are just a few of our things that we like to do. And then dividing perennials, perfect time of year for that. Um, planting, again, as we talked about, planting perennials. Um, changing out your containers to a fall container that will go through fall and winter, you know, because a lot of your annuals or petunias and whatnot are gonna, they're gonna be gone when the frost hits them. So time to be thinking about that and redoing those and, you know, making them something that's hardy. Right. Okay. All right. Let's go to Jay. Jay on line one. Hello, Jay. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I got a question to ask because I have no idea. My grandmother, she was a great gardener. Yes. But on our family farm, she now passed away, but her rose bush is still there. And my wife has decided she wants the rose bush at our house. Is it okay to dig it up now and plant it, or should I wait till spring and do it? And I'll, I'll let you answer. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Actually, if it's a very special rose bush, I would do a couple of things um, because I always, uh, more is better when it comes to preserving heritage plants for me. So the first thing I do right now is I would take some cuttings and I would um, take those cuttings like um, you'll, you'll see the leaves and I'll go down two sets of leaves and I'll cut it, you know, um, just below that and then take off the one of the sets of leaves, rough it up a little bit and put it in some sand or um, some prolite or something like that and, and keep it moist and maybe set them in my garage for the winter or I mean I, I would do that if you have a greenhouse that's great but if you're not you know I've had success just setting them in the garage and keeping them moist all the time and letting them root and then I would actually dig it up when it's dormant which is going to be in the winter like maybe somewhere you know maybe like March I would go ahead and dig it up then and then transplant it that is something a lot of people want to try and do, right? Yes. A special rose mm -hmm. bush or garden, yes. they want to move it over. Yes. And, and what's the success rate? Oh, it's, you know, um, very good. As long as you give it, um, if you're taking it and you're putting it in the, the right place, which, you know, if it's a rose, it's going to need sun. It's going to need um, dr uh, soil that drains really well. You don't want to put it in mucky ground. You want to have it, you know, a place that's going to drain well. And um, so sunny and draining, dr well drained soil, and it should be fine. And by the way, I've moved rose bushes anytime. If they need to be moved, I've just moved them and I've never lost one. But um, but the perfect time would be, and fall is okay, if you have to move it, if it needs to be moved, move it now. I would not be afraid to move it now. But um, anytime, you could probably move it anytime between now and, and into spring. I would not move them in the summer. Mm -hmm. That would be the, mm -hmm. the worst time to move it. But if you need to move it now, I would not be afraid to move it in the fall, into the winter, um, any of those, anytime, anytime, anytime during that Okay. All right. Very good advice. Um, what else did you bring there as far as herbs? Well, I don't know. Let me see. Okay. Because I love going through all that. That's great stuff. It's fun, isn't it? I love it? the toothache plant. Yes. Well, this plant, do you know what this is? No. Okay. You see it growing everywhere alongside the roads. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. And a lot of people, I would bring this out and they would just automatically start sneezing. <laughs> 
Or I've come close, but no, I'm not sneezing. No, no, no I'm kidding <laughs> because it's um, it, it, it does not make you sneeze. Oh, good. I find myself going to bat for this plant every fall because a lot of people, I used to have a tea room and I would put this in bouquets and people would walk in and go, oh, I can't believe you have that in a bouquet in the, you know, here. And I'm like, why? It's not ragweed. A lot of people confuse it with ragweed. Yeah, when you started describing it, that's what I thought it would be. Okay, but it's not ragweed. It's not ragweed. Okay. And actually, the pollen's really big and heavy, and and it, it's be very hard to even breathe this in, the pollen, because pollen, you have to, you know, you breathe it in. And so this is not a plant that's a problem. I've never known anyone really to be allergic to this plant. Um, but it often grows near ragweed, so I think it gets a bad rap because of who it hangs out with. <laughs> Sometimes that's a lesson for all of us. <laughs> it is a lesson for all of us. <laughs> However, this is one of the most underused medicinal herb around. And so I will dry it as soon as it starts to flower. I've already started drying some. I will dry this one's starting to dry already. You can see it's starting to get brittle, the flat right, the, right. the leaves and whatnot. I hang it upside down, I dry it, flowers and the leaves, and then I just put it in a jar and I use it if um, flu season, cold season, it actually helps to combat that. So as soon as I start to feel like I'm coming down with something, I will make a you know a nice strong tea with this and drink it three times a day. And uh, it what's also, that called again? What is it? It's goldenrod, golden saldago. Goldenrod. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And it's plentiful. There's probably 300 different varieties of it. You'll see it everywhere. The butterflies love it. Insects love it. It is a insect pollinated plant. So it's you know it's really a champion for all the insects who need to eat food and pollen and and um, so it's great for that. And it's beautiful this time of year. So you'll see it growing, and they have um, dwarf varieties that you can actually put in your garden. You know, like I just have them growing in my garden. I have all different kinds, and I also have them growing on my farm. So I'm never without this plant. And actually, and another a really great, um, you know, um, part of this plant would be a, a great usage for people is that it actually helps to combat allergies. Really? Yeah. So it's Because a lot of people would think it would make them sneeze, but you're yeah. saying it actually helps combat Yes. Allergies. If you have seasonal allergies, drink some tea from Goldenrod. So, all right, you turn it upside down, dry it, and it begins to look like that. Yes. The one over here. Yes. And then you take those leaves off and just put it in By a, the time it dries, you can actually just take your finger and just run this down and just... They all just fall it, off. Put in a jar, label it. But you can have it fresh too. You can make fresh tea from this. You can just use the flowers and the leaves mm -hmm. and make a fresh tea from it this time of year if you want to. And it starts blooming. There's different varieties. It'll start blooming in August and it blooms into the fall. So it has a long blooming period, so it's always available. Now, would that have caffeine? No, no caffeine. Do any of these have caffeine? No. Nope. When you say make tea, they don't, it's not a caffeine, it's, these caffeinated. Are, yeah, no, they would be no caffeine in these. Okay, let's go to Lily. Hello, Lily. Yes. Hi, what's on your mind? Yes, um, thanks for taking my call. I would like to know, do you, could you name um, some plants that clean the air that I could use indoors? Clean the air indoors. Okay. Sure. What about... That. Um, all plants help to clean the air, but some that have a reputation for that that come right off the top of my head are like um, spider plant. Have you seen you know, the spider plant? That is supposed to be one, the corn plant. They call it the corn plant. There's lots of indoor plants. In fact, all indoor plants help to clean the air. So any plant inside is, is wonderful, but those two come to mind right away that are specifically known for the, their cleaning air properties. And like, all right, are you still there, Lily? Are you still there? Yes. Like, in what way? What do you mean, clean the air? Like, on, on the inside, like, um, if I don't have, a, like, an air purifier or anything. Right. It, but, yeah. So, yeah. say somebody's smoking or has smoked in there, you want it no, kind of... I don't smoke at all, no. I don't smoke. <laughs> Okay, yeah, any, but just yeah. freshen it up in there. All plants, all plants help to clean the air. So, but especially spider plants. I believe the corn plant is one. There's a whole list you can Google the list of them that are really um, known for that. But to me, all plants help um, because they all help to take out the carbon dioxide and put in fresh oxygen and do their thing. Well, those smell so great. Those would help. All that. Just bring that. That basket yes. in. <laughs> Lily, just get that basket right there. All right, we're going to take a break. If you want to call free gardening advice, there's the number 615 737 plus 615 737 7587. Take a break. Be back right after this. Yeah. And if you